My name is Jason. Welcome back to Professor Sports Cards, where I go over anything and everything card related. In this episode, we go over more eBay packaging. We go over some Marvel rookie cards. So we're going to take a look, deeper dive in to tag the grading company and get your thoughts on it. Mm, rise to the top. Oh, yeah. My As always, we start with a card. What rookie running back? Whose card is this? He's a Hall of Famer, is a hint. And what year is it? Comment below whose rookie card is this and what year is this card from? I'm also getting the mic. I'm still working on the audio. Do you Something. understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Our first story is this here, the creative ways I would ship cards I ordered the past two weeks. And he said all of these made it there safely and okay. But it makes me, I don't know what's going on there, to be honest. That's all right. Uh, but it makes me feel better about how I ship cards. I can't stand this. The paint, like, there's buy team bags, and maybe there are team bags in there. I can't, the tape is just, uh, buy a bigger team bag to put the whole tape in or do something. I can't stand all the tape. The tape drives me wild, and some people go tape crazy. I don't mind this one. This one seems the most how I would ship. I might try to put a cardboard piece on each side or a top loader on each side if they're just in penny sleeves to protect the cards better. But again, he said he got all the cards pretty much got there protected and well. This is an envelope inside an envelope. Uh, just raw in a box, it looks like. Hard to tell what's... Is that just a pack? I don't know. That seems fine. In the comments, he said he just likes looking at all the different ways. That, again, I could live with. It's not a ton of tape. I still feel the tape's pretty unnecessary. And maybe not, maybe argue it needs some tape. I can't think, maybe I do put a little tape now I'm thinking about it, but please limit it. This is perfect. This is fine. This is okay. This is an A plus shipping for me. Maybe a top loader on each side or some cardboard. If they're protected, it looks like they might have top loaded cards on each side. That's a good packing job right there. In my opinion, this, yeah, not in love with. This guy orders a lot of cards, but fun to see. Yeah, it is interesting to see that every single person ships a different way. What's the difference between me and you? And, you know, I buy a bubble mailer. I throw it in there. I, I make sure the card is in a team bag with a little protection. Some of the comments, just take a quick look. If you buy cards, you'll know that what I'm talking about and you'll relate to this post because it is crazy to see that some of the times I get shipped cards and it drives me nuts. Here it is. Which ones had damage? None that I saw, thankfully. I just like seeing the various ways the cards were shipped. And it was interesting enough to look through. And also interesting to hear none of them were as bad as some of those were shipped. As bad as some of these were, none of them. I guess there's some bubble wrap around that. I mean, that's just none of them were, were injured or damaged. probably seen these before this is a kind of a big set when it comes to marvel collectors uh, prices have come way down to affordable during the boom or pop they were quite a bit more a little unreasonable in my opinion but you got this picked it up at a local card show for ten dollars nightcrawler 1999 marvel universe this guy said he got the whole set for 75 dollars now clearly not graded that would just be raw i got several nines i sent 60 or so to psa I got 13 tens most of it sold on eBay. Costs more to grade it than they sold it for. Ain't that the truth? I see that's a good deal. I have a full box of these. I guess I'm. You're, it's raw. So is it a good deal? Because then you have to send it in for 18 bucks to get it graded. And then you'll eventually lose money on it. Because raw people are probably spending 5, 10 bucks. I don't know less. One of my favorite cards from the 90s. Great score. I wanted to take a look at this Wolverine. I mean, it's it's one of the only I don't know if it's their rookie cards, but it's damn close if not. You know, it's 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 close if not. This is a PSA 9 1990 Marvel Universe. And maybe I'm way off, but I was having trouble finding cards from previous on some of these people. There's 547 in a PSA 9, and the main reason I brought this up is I just wanted to show you this is 2021 in a PSA 9 this card was over $90. In some cases over $100. And then we could see okay, $50. And the, the steady fall for oh, hang on a second. Oh. 
40, 29, 30, 50, 60, and then today it's selling for $11 in a PSA 9. So. You don't have much room to lose. If you like these cards, if you're into these these Marvel cards, which do have some some sway in it, their circle, you know, that they were of all the Marvel stuff that really went up during the boom, this this was some of it. There's also 1991, but 90 is the first year. And the PSA 10, it's currently selling for $130 and it's semi-rare. There's just 283 copies. And again, what do we see? I just let's just look at the two year. I hate those all time charts in that case. The two year, I mean, it was selling, it had some pops for over 150, but generally around 100. And recently it's been selling for around 100. So it's held kind of price, the PSA 10. And that's because the scarcity just being 283 of them. <laughs> Now that the Olympics have started, we have an article here, 10 biggest names to watch. I don't want to scroll through the whole thing because it gets kind of boring if I do that, but we have Simone Biles probably competing in her last Olympics and same thing with Rafael Nadal. We have this, uh, what was it? Her competing in her fifth and final games. That's amazing. Shelly Ann Fraser Price is in her fifth Olympic games. And if we scroll down further, oh, there's Wim Bayama. We'll talk about him in a moment, but uh, this is his, this man's 39 years old and it's, he's won the last two marathons in the Olympics is what I believe I read to make history with his third consecutive Olympic marathon gold medal uh, this year in Paris. You have to think that's his last time competing. He's 39 years old. Who knows with these runners, but that's pretty impressive. And then you have Wemby and LeBron and Team USA is kind of like an all-star team and you have Serbia with Joker. It's it, all these other countries have these star NBA players. So it'll be really fun to watch Katie Ledecky and we'll stop here. She should break some records possibly and win, win some golds with seven Olympic gold medals and 20 world, 21 world championship titles. Ledecky is already one of the swimming all time greats. And I think she'll probably gold is my guess in Paris. <laughs> In this box, I'm collecting every single NBA basketball player's rookie card to ever play. Hall of Famers, they get slabbed. Change of direction by Brian Slam dunk. Yesterday, we took a look at Akeem Olajuwon, and I didn't have his actual 1986 Flair rookie card. Here are three players I do have their 86 Flair rookie card. And again, I'm trying to build the most in-depth rookie card collection uh, in the country, really. Uh, I love that. And you can't have an in-depth rookie card collection out players like this. Today, L3 didn't have quite the career the other two players did, but still a nice long NBA career. Byron Scott was a key part to two championships or even maybe three of them uh, in LA. Now that I think about it, I think he won three of them there, but maybe just two. And then Manute Bull, you know, known for his height, shot blocking ability, and his son Bull Bull ended up being a pretty good basketball player himself. I did mention we were going to take a deep dive into tag. I'm going to try, depending how long this video is, I'm going to put a quick video behind this just to show you how in-depth they go. They send you just a breakdown of everything. Number out of 100, this, and out of 100, this, and where did we see here, and what did we score there? It's truly an amazing breakdown. We're having a hard time. I mean, this is all the way back in May. I haven't heard much of tag at all this year. So they're having a hard time gaining traction. But this guy says everyone laughs at tag slabs, PSA, this and Beckett this have y'all looked at the dig reports everyone wants a reason their cards got the grade they did and still praise PSA as king look into tag I highly recommend 99% of my PC is PSA I'm a collector not a flipper hits in the comments but tag they send you your cards back like this which is kind of neat and they just give you a huge breakdown but the real appeal again is the uh, the details in the grading and why the card got the grade they did now I'm going to say up front, uh, they kind of go a little, it's almost a little too much information they give. It's uh, confusing, but we'll go through it a bit here. Uh, so my Travis Kelsey, which is the card we're going to use as the example, graded a mint nine, but on the one to a thousand scale, I actually graded a 946, which you can see at the, uh, at the top there. And this is an image of the actual card. So if you scroll down a little more, you get the pop count information. I think this is really interesting. There, there is a pop report and you can see on the left is just the, the pop count. This card has been graded a total of two times at this point by tag both of them getting mint nines, but the ranking in the middle card rank is uh, the one that I think is really interesting. You know, mine is the nicest copy ever graded by tag. Uh, got a 946. I assume, you know, obviously the other card that was a mint nine was not as high as a 946, but 
you know, with two cards graded in total, who cares? But you can imagine that down the road, five years from now, if there's, say, a fairly common card that's been graded a thousand times, uh, well, I bet there's a lot of appeal to a lot of collectors to be able to go online and say, yeah, it's been graded a thousand times. It's a pretty common card, but mine is the third nicest copy ever graded by by tag. I can see that having a lot of appeal to a lot of collectors uh, in, the, in the big picture. And you can also get the report card for the card's condition. And this is extensive and I think it's almost overkill. A lot of numbers just everywhere you look. Uh, basically, they give to a one to a thousand score in every category you would think of and, uh, and and a bunch of categories you wouldn't think of. The centering is far more than just, you know, 60-40 or 55-45 type of thing, but it's down to the one one hundredth of a percent. Uh, you can see left to right centering on this card is 50.68 by 49.32. And it, the width of the card, for example, is supposed to be 2.5, but they look at the very bottom. The bottom number is 2.501, meaning this card is one one thousandth of a centimeter too wide. For surface, they list every single imperfection here, uh, no matter how minor it is. A lot of this stuff you can't even see by the naked eye. Here's PSA is the biggest scam since one hour dry cleaning. Okay, all right. Uh, fortunately, it takes time to gain a good market share. Tag is doing good things, but they'll need more investment in eyes. I mean, Tag, and they have just not gained traction, but they really do provide a neat service. And I'm curious if PSA or any other company will move towards this way in the future. Great Scott. Going back to the beginning of the video, if you said Hall of Famer Walter Payton, you were correct. This is his 1976 Topps rookie card. In a PSA 8, it's currently selling for just over $1,100. Sorry, getting need something to drink. And there's 3,000 of them. So it shows the demand because there's 3,000. It's still selling for 1,100. And of course, there's going to be demand for this high-profile athlete, one of the best running backs of all time. This last sale was July 17th, 2024. And I'm going to guess, based on this price, that the PSA 9 and PSA 10 are rather rare. I would guess combined there's under 1,000 copies each, and maybe I'm way off, but let's see. Based off the PSA 8 price. So there's 731 in a PSA 9, and it sells for 4,700. And I'm going to guess the PSA 10, there's under 100 of them selling for a lot of money. Beautiful card, Hall of Fame running back, top five running back of all time. Some would argue the best all time. In a PSA 10, there are just 55, and it last sold for 41 grand. So is the move to go jump in on those PSA 9s? With the PSA 10 selling for so much, you'd assume if they appreciate, the PSA 9 will trickle up as, as well. And most people, this is just out of their price range. To be honest, the PSA 9 is out of... That is most people's price range. If we look at the last two years, this card sold for 75 grand back in August of 2022. And the most recent sale, June of 2024, it sold for 41,000. So this continues to come up throughout the videos, throughout the show, is that when you spend this kind of money on a card, it's a, it's a gamble because you can lose a lot of money. I'm getting completely and utterly wrecked. Hopefully whoever spent 70 grand holds this card another decade and watches it trickle and climb back up. In a PSA 9, you're not, you didn't lose 30 grand. In a PSA 9 two years ago, all right, you spent $6,000. You did take a loss because there was a recent sale of this one, 4,700, but it's really selling for closer to, to four grand. You got a long ball here. Hits in. Out in front, Allah takes it to the line. McGoin, oh! Allah takes it to the line. McGoin, oh! So you might have lost two thousand dollars, and that's a third of the the money you spent if you spent six, and it's down to four. But you didn't lose twenty or thirty grand. Yeah, that's crazy. Now, obviously, you're gonna hit and grow way bigger in that PSA ten. You have a lot more money to make. Then, but you have also a lot more money to lose. I can explain it in one word, but then you, I know what you're going to ask me, then you're going to ask me to explain it more. What I try to do is I try to kill myself. What do you mean? I work, work myself out to the extent where I, when I'm through, I can't walk. Peyton's conditioning regimen astounds people, and he keeps increasing his fitness program as he gets older. 
have a hard time remembering to switch back over to put my face in this, but if you've been following me for the past week or so, you know I've been invested a little bit in this One Piece Romance Dawn, and I have two boxes of it sealed, the, the second run, the $200 box, not the 900 and so I really wanted to open it, and I decided, hey, I'll spend 20 bucks on eBay, and I got a pretty, I found, I, sometimes you do that and you get such a bad deal, but I, I enjoyed it, I got a good deal, and they also sent this open box, and this is the blue bottom, which is the original op one so if the, that might be worth 20 bucks itself now or even in the future you know in the future it might be worth more but now i bet you that has a little bit of value because the the sealed of this is selling for 900 dollars currently could go down i could lose i could fall again i invested in mine are the same romance dawn but they have a white back for 200 dollars each right now it's the second print run of that and uh, I hope that it climbs. But anyways, this is some of the stuff. And I was glad I got the Luffy. Most of the characters I did not know. I don't like how this camera picks up the cards. But uh, it came, they came back cool. I did enjoy looking through it. It, it got me my fix. It basically showed, okay, I'm not going to open this stuff right now. I'm going to keep it sealed. It, it fixed the itch. So I'm not going to open it. Yeah! 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 If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It helps the algorithm. It helps this channel. Subscribe if you have not yet. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day. What up, everybody? This is Robert Ory, a.k.a. Big Shot Bob, and you're watching Professional Sports Cards. Hey, by the way, go buy my rookie card.